So this is the brand new Samsung Galaxy S23, and it's probably one of the best small phones you can buy today. It retails for $799, yes, there's a lot of other phones for cheaper that offer more, but they're not as small as this. Like you could buy a Pixel 7 Pro or a Pixel 7 or a Sue Zen phone, but there's nothing like this that completes the entire package in a 6.1 inch device. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Galaxy S22 to compare it to, but they did make some design changes. For one, the camera housing that used to be on the S22 is now gone. It's no longer there. It's more of just a clean flat back and then you have the camera rings around the cameras. It's a tiny bit lighter at 5.8 ounces compared to 5.9 on the previous model. You have Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the back of the phone, so it's the latest durable glass that you can buy for this device. Of course, you have the aluminum framing, which feels nice and polished. It's not a slippery phone, and because of its size, it just feels very easy to hold in one hand. Now, the big difference this year is they have a faster fingerprint scanner. Like, it is pretty quick to log in now, and usually ultrasonic fingerprint scanners are usually on the slower side. This one's quick, not as fast as optical, not as fast as the physical fingerprint scanner on the side of a Fold 4, but it's fast enough that I don't have too many complaints. You have the standard stuff you'd find on any Samsung device, so your Type-C port, you have your slot for your SIM card, and then of course you have two speakers on the phone that give you external sound. Now the sound on this is really good for a smaller phone. It's not gonna beat the bigger S23 Ultra, but it sounds exceptional for a smaller device. Now, if you are picking this up, make sure you get the model with 256 gigabytes. The good news is Samsung's offering a pre-order value that allows you to get the 256 gigabyte version for the exact same price as the 128 one. And the reason why I say that is not only do you get more storage, but the 256 gigabyte version has faster storage in general. And that will make a big difference if you keep this phone for years to come. The next little change is the display. Even though it's still rocking a 120 hertz display with a 48 to 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate, just like the previous one, the difference is the brightness. So it's technically using a different panel. This can get up to 1750 nits of peak brightness compared to 1300 nits in the previous device. This is really important if you're using this device outdoors or if you really wanna appreciate HDR, that extra bit of peak brightness will help out. It's a gorgeous display, and quite frankly, I can't tell the difference compared to the S23 Ultra. They both look incredible. In fact, I have the S23 Ultra right here, and this will give you an idea the size difference compared to both of these phones. Like this S23 Ultra is obviously a two-handed phone, like it's a big phone. You're buying this for the battery life, you're buying this for the biggest screen, you're buying this for the best possible Samsung experience. The little guy is for the one-handers, and I don't feel like you're losing much by using the smaller version of this compared to the bigger one. Like, I use this phone day in, day out, and I don't feel like I'm missing much from the S23 Ultra, except for the bigger display. Like there's times where I'm like, I wish I had a slightly bigger display, but then there's times I'd carry the S23 Ultra and be like, I don't like carrying this big thing in my pocket. I'd rather carry and hold something like this. So these are the kind of trade-offs you have to decide for yourself. But just like the S23 Ultra, you are getting the same processor. It's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. So it's technically using a slightly higher clocked CPU compared to the regular 8 Gen 2. And even though it's using the same processor as the Ultra, it doesn't run as fast. This is a smaller body. It heats up a little bit more. It doesn't have the room to dissipate the heat and obviously doesn't have the same cooling capabilities. Is this gonna make a difference in your day-to-day -day activities? Absolutely not. This is for like the hardcore enthusiast who's playing PUBG all day and needs the maximum frames per second because he's a maniac. Like that's when you'd wanna use the S23 Ultra. And the other little change is the battery size. Like this got bumped up to 3,900 milliamp hours compared to 3,700 in the previous version. So not only do we have a bigger battery, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is more efficient overall. Like if you are a hardcore heavy user, you're gaming, taking photos, you're on the phone all day, you can probably expect around five to five and a half hours of screen on time. If you're more of a medium to light user like I am, you can easily get six and a half to seven hours of screen on time like I did. Now, unfortunately it doesn't have the same 45 watt 
fast charging that the bigger S23 Ultra has, you're kind of stuck at 25, but of course you can always just sip slowly and use wireless charging instead. I've never had an issue where I felt like I needed fast charging on this device. I feel like 25 watts is more than fast enough for me, but I know some of my audience wants the fastest charging as possible. The other little change is the front facing camera. On the previous model, it was 10 megapixels, but on the new S23, it's been bumped up to 12. You can shoot 4K and all that stuff, but the front facing camera does take good photos. I compared it to the iPhone 14 and I found the 14 just had more natural skin tones, whereas the S23 tended to make my skin look a bit yellow. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't a bad pick. I still think it looks good. It's just, it's still not, doing a good job with the color balance. All right, so now you're looking at the front facing camera on the Galaxy S23 versus the iPhone 14. Galaxy can do UHD 30, whereas the iPhone 14 is stuck at HD 30. You guys let me know which one sounds better, and of course, which one actually looks better. Now, the software experience has been fantastic. Samsung One UI 5.1 on a smaller phone looks incredible. It feels nice and tight. It feels clean. It just looks and functions amazing. Now, one thing that's been kind of controversial is the camera layout. It's the exact same one as the S22. So 50 megapixel wide lens, you have your 10 megapixel telephoto, and then of course a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. Now, Samsung did say they improved the computational photography. Low light photos should perform better. I don't have an S22 to compare to, but I did compare it to the iPhone 14. Overall, the camera feels just as good as the S23 Ultra. I found that outdoors, the color tones tended to be a bit more on the cool side compared to the warm look on an iPhone 14. And the camera computational photography does match up to the bigger S23 Ultra. Now you will get slightly, and I mean ever so slightly better photos on the S23 Ultra, but not by much. Now if we're talking about nighttime photography, it was really trading blows with the iPhone 14. The shots looked great with both devices. I found that the S23 tended to do a lot of smoothening of the picture, which means less noise, whereas the iPhone 14 did less smoothening, but you got a lot more digital noise in the photo. In terms of Indoor shots, that's where this phone kind of fell apart. Depending on the lighting, it can really throw off the white balance. I did turn off scene optimizer for a lot of these shots to see if that had an effect. And for the most part, it helped a little bit, but it still got tricked. Now video is interesting because I did find the stabilization to be slightly better on the Samsung device, but the overall color reproduction is still better on the iPhone 14. It's just richer, there's more dynamic range. It just holds the crown for the best video even to this day. Not that this is bad, like this takes great video, but you can definitely tell there's a difference. When it comes to action mode or steady shot, uh, again, the Galaxy and iPhone both do a great job, but in this situation, the Samsung phone actually looks a bit sharper and cleaner because it can shoot at a higher resolution. So here's the thing, this is obviously not the best bang for your buck phone when you compare it to devices like the Pixel 7 Pro and Pixel 7, but this is the best small phone you can buy right now. It pretty much has everything you want in a small phone. Like it doesn't really cut corners on anything. Sure, you can argue fast charging. Sure, you can argue a QHD display, but I disagree. QHD on a phone this size really doesn't make a difference. You cannot tell the difference on a 6.1 inch display. And I feel like if you don't mind having a smaller device, I'd personally just save the money and buy the regular Ga Galaxy S23 over the bigger S23 Ultra. I'd only go for the bigger one if you want like the best Samsung experience, if you want the bigger display and bigger battery. And yes, you could make the argument for the S23 Plus, but I feel like when you get that close to the Ultra, you might as well just go big and go home. That's my review of the S23. Let me know if you want me to compare this to any other devices in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.